the nine point drought and the fully transferred. But, um, can you bring us up to speed? Has there been any developments on that from this week? Um, no, they're still working hard. Uh, Lee, and, Lee and Ehab are working hard on David. Um, but no new news. Would you expect anything before the weekend? No. No, no nothing for the weekend. Um, any progress made on this new attacker that you've been looking for? Again, they're they're working hard. Um, nothing, no progress. It's just uh, it is what it is. It is we are where we are. Um, today we've had Norbert Balak back with us probably for the last three or four days. We've had Josh McGuinness back with us. Um, so we're looking a bit stronger in the top end of the pitch. Is that uh, lessen the need for, for urgency? No, I think I think I said I think we still need maybe one to to add to what we've got. Um, so we're still looking. Um, I think when you spoke to Burns after the Rolling game, you said you were at a bit of a crossroads with one particular target. Have, have you moved on from them yet, or is that still still the same? Really, still the same. Um, we've got we've got different options. Um, so it's really down to us when we when we um, when we trigger one of them. Um, so at the minute we're okay. There's no real rush, but we're trying. Okay, a couple of names that you've been linked with this week. Uh, Martin Samuelson. Is there any truth in that? Uh, to be honest, with you, I'm not going to. I'm not going to speak about speculation because, you know, like I've said to you before, I'm sure there's going to be loads of names thrown. Um, again, we've seen a name thrown on Sky Sports today. Um, where that's come from, who knows? Um, so it's uh, speculation at this time is is always top of people's list and priorities, and they, they like to put stories out there that probably don't even exist. Um, for us, we just stay focused on the job at hand. Um, we know what, what exactly we need and, and what we need. Um, and Lee and, and Eab and David are working very hard on that. The other side of the transfer window, any bids for yours? No, nothing. Nothing. Obviously, just the Leo one, as you, as you know of. And everything else is quiet. Have you felt the need to sit Leo down since that happened? Or? I haven't said a word to him. No. I don't need to. Um, no, the kid inside out. Um, nothing like that worries him. I mean, he's come from when he was at Peterborough. He was linked with everybody all through the years. Um, at such a young age, you know, he's been linked from linked with this, that, and the other. Um, it never bothered him. He just got on with it. Um, I've spoken to his agent. I'm sure his agent's spoken to Lee. That me and Leo just speak about the football. That's it. Um, the stance is very clear from the football club that he's he's not for sale. Um, you, you mentioned him getting linked with all. So is he almost used to that speculation? Well, settling. Yeah, I mean, he's had it all through his through his time at Peterborough, especially when I was there. Um, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of hype about him, um, and he was he was linked with you know numerous <coughs> numerous clubs and at numerous times, and he, he just got on with his football and, and and worried about that. So he's he's a, again it, nothing nothing phases the boy. He'll just get on with his job. Um, do you say it's the end of the matter now, or do you f fear that there might be a follow-up? I think there has been follow-ups, but again, there, there's no the club are not willing to sell. It's as it's, it's simple as that. That you know he's been here four months. Um, He's improving all the time. Uh, you know, it's he's gone from a year of not playing at Wigan, and sometimes that can knock people. You know, and um, what you've seen of Leo here is he's been patient, waiting for his chance. Um, he's got in the team and he's taken his chance. And he, you know, he's grown every time he trains, he plays, he's getting better and better. And there's there's so much more to come from him. Um, we obviously entered this window with a lot of speculation over Jared. Is is anything materialised? Have been any? Pick up the phone to any managers or, or sorry? No, like no, no. I, I, again, I don't, I don't, I don't worry myself for that. I don't worry myself for speculation or anything like that. I, I let other people do that. For me, I just focus on the football. Jared's the same. Focuses on the football. What, I, what any player you ask me about, they'll, it'll be the same thing. They worry about the football, um, and that's where we go. With Jared in mind, is there any development on contract talks? No, nothing. Nothing's been developed anywhere really. So it's a bit of a boring press conference for you today. <laughs> um, so it's. Uh, a little bit boring for you. I haven't got no real new news for you. Um, nothing's nothing's changed in incomings. Nothing's changed on new contracts. Um, it is what it is. We'll try and find something to talk about. <laughs> FA Cup draw. How, how did you view that one? Yeah, good. I think it's a good opportunity for for us to uh, to, to possibly fill the stadium uh, and get a lot of people in there and watches and and hopefully we can we can make the, those fans come back and watch us again. Um, I think that's the opportunity for us, really, and we can do that by putting a good performance on. But, I mean, that's a few weeks away. But it was a nice draw. You know, we can look forward to that when, when it comes along. Um, it'll, be a, it'll be a tremendous test for us. I wonder if it's catch-22 
22 because you either want a cup run or you want to test yourself against the best. The two don't necessarily go hand in hand, do they? No, when the game comes along, we'll we'll approach it like any other game. Um, we'll pick the freshest team. We'll pick the team that we think that can that can cause a problem if if that's if that's how you can do it against Chelsea, and um, we'll see how we go. And the team news for Saturday. You touched upon Josh and Norbert. Have either got a chance for Saturday? Um, Norbert's going to play tomorrow in a in a in the twenty threes game because it's important. He's been out for about ten weeks, so he'll play some part of the game tomorrow. Um, Josh has only just come back today. You know, he's only just trained today with, with the squad. Um, so that's a decision we'll make overnight. Um, Stephen Kingsley, have you got a clear prognosis on how long he's going to be Yeah, here? he's going to be back, uh, not Monday coming, but the Monday after, back on the training ground. Yeah, Callum Hill, they'll be back training on Monday. Um, we're starting to look a bit better on the injury front, really. Uh, Keno, Keno trained today, obviously after having the, the, the kick. Um, from the weekend, so he's good. John Terrell and Kevin Stewart are where they are. They're still probably four or five weeks away um, in terms of probably training with us, and then it's going to take them time to get back up to speed again. Um, so the injuries are starting to look a bit better, uh, and everyone's working hard. I know the physios are working very hard with them. And just on Callum, if he starts training one day, do you think he's got a chance for next weekend? Is that the goal? Or? Well, the goal is to try and get him a good week's training. Um, that that would be ideal for him. You know, it's. Um, the team's doing well at the minute. It's obviously not ideal what we're having to do, but I think what they've done in, in the back four that finished the game against uh, QPR were excellent, and again they were excellent. Sheffield Wednesday, um, but it's you know it's not ideal what we're doing, but it, you know, it needs must sometimes when you've got two fullbacks injured. Um, so we uh, we were pleased to see the performances of Pennington and, and Eric in different positions that they haven't played this season. Although Penno started there against Millwall and came off very early. Um, we know is one of the reasons why we brought him to the football club because of his versatility and he can play centre back, right back. Um, and if we needed him sure he could probably play left back. So it's um that was one of the reasons. Given how it went and the, the result you got the easy thing would be to keep the same team that beat Sheffield Wednesday but you've since made Toby Kane and to Simon Hope. How difficult is it going to be to accommodate everyone? Well, we we don't we don't approach it games like that. Right. We don't we don't approach because the game the teams won and then we we keep the same team. We never we never approach it like that. We always approach it of how we we see the dynamic of the game is going to be, where we feel as if we can we can hurt the opposition. Um, what can nullify their strengths a bit? That's how we approach every game, and it doesn't mean because the team won at QPR or Sheffield Wednesday the team will be the same. Um, we always make sure we pick the right team to get the. Get, to get the next result, um, win, lose or draw. OK, moving on to the about good section. Um, this, is, this Fulham game... Can I just ask a question Sorry. about um, the, the <coughs> uh, coming so soon after you sort of went within a point of uh, the playoffs ground, so that's been a sort of good pick-me-up around the place. The, the draw? The draw, yeah, the draw and you know the fact that now you're knocking on the door of the playoffs and just how you sort of analyse the season at this point. Yeah, I mean, at this point we are focused on the league. That's what we're focused on, and um, that is our number one objective: is to is to do as well we can uh, as well as we can in the league. And another really tough game for us against one of the best teams in the league, in my opinion, definitely the one of the best football teams. Um, the draw is a nice bonus, you know. It's a nice bonus for us when it comes along. Um, it's funny because <laughs> the uh, I don't know if anyone's seen it, but Sky Sports put a little predictor thing on when you press it, and you can pick a team. Did anyone see it? No. Um, my boys were showing me on Twitter and when I did it I pressed it it was Chelsea so I knew it was going to get Chelsea before the draw <laughs> and, and, and you often predict who you're going to play in the next round no not really no but I just, I just got a bit lucky really I couldn't believe it when I said Chelsea um, but yeah no, it's, it's a nice little pick me up for the, for, the, for the whole city really you know I think it's nice to, to see a Premier League club coming back um, and, and, we'll, and we'll look forward to it when it comes along and test ourselves We've seen the bigger crowds, haven't we, for the, uh, the likes of the Derby and the West Brom here, when there's been the discounted tickets and you've seen the numbers come in here. Have you predicted an, another big one, travel arrangements from London, notwithstanding, because they're shooting the rail line that day. Yeah. Um, but do you anticipate that the City now are going to finally get behind you and this team? I hope so. I hope so. I mean, all we can do is focus on the football and keep trying to entertain the, the, the paying public and... I mean, I think I touched on after the game against Rotherham that the support we've had 
over these three away games but has been nothing short of outstanding for them to travel to QPR to, to Sheffield Wednesday to Rotherham in the space of what was it seven seven eight days um, was excellent you know and, and they spurred the boys on to come out at Rotherham and see the back end of the st that stand nearly full I know it's not too far but it does help um, would love to, to obviously get more more fans into into the KCOM um, but that but what 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 will make that happen is us keep winning games um, and hopefully the supporters can come back and help us because they're huge for us and, and the boys love it when the, when the stadium's um, fuller than what it is. Um, it definitely gives us a real incentive to go and win the game even more. Lovely, just one more for me if I may, and that's about Herbie Kane and reasons for signing him and what you think uh, a lad that's coming through the Liverpool ranks will bring to this football club? Um, energy, aggression, Calmness on the ball, uh, really good character. Doesn't get phased by big occasions or anything like that. Doesn't really worry who he's playing against. Just focuses on his game, and he adds more, more strength and depth to our to our midfield. Um, obviously, with the injuries of Terrell and, and and Stewart, we've been a little bit limited in terms of what we could do. Um, but the boys who were here before Herbie come in have been brilliant. You know, the Batty, uh, Honeyman, Irvine, uh, De Silva, Lopez, they've been excellent. So just to give them a bit of help um, is, is what I like and what, and what we need, really, I think, if we're going to have a real serious push.